My name is John Still from the University of New South Wales. This is another in my little series of videos on complex analysis. In this video, I'm going to look at Cauchy's integral formula. Now, I'm going to put up the general one here. And this is the formula here. And what do these symbols mean? Well, if gamma is to be a simple closed contour, that means it doesn't cross itself, except for the fact that the beginning point and the end point are the same. And you've got a function f that's analytic on an inside gamma, and inside makes sense if you're a simple closed contour. Uh, I've not written up here, but we're going to assume that gamma is taken positively, that's anti-clockwise, with the inside on the left as you traverse gamma. Then we have this formula here, the integral around gamma f of z over z minus z dot to the n plus 1, the n a non-negative integer, is 2 pi i over n factorial times the value of the nth derivative, that's what this notation means, f brackets n, the nth derivative of f at z0. So in particular, for this integral, the value of the function is totally irrelevant except at z0. Okay. So this is a way, in fact, of doing certain integrals without doing any integration at all. All you have to do is differentiate, possibly. So I'm going to go through uh, basic examples four examples typical of the type you face when doing these problems. Okay. Now the first one is a very simple one, the integral e to the iz over z plus i around the contour mod z equals 3, assumed to be taken once positively, in other words, anti-clockwise. Well, I've also drawn up a little diagram here, and my advice to you is always draw a diagram of the contour and the singularities before you do anything like these integrals. Okay, these ones are very simple, but it pays to always do it so you know exactly where the singularities are. In this case, contour, just a simple circle, and the singularity clearly is at minus i, that's where the denominator vanishes. So, according to Cauchy's integral formula, as long as e to the iz is analytic on an inside gamma, well, it's analytic everywhere, so that's not a problem, then we just have to evaluate this function at z equals minus i and multiply by 2 pi. So it's 2 pi i, well, over the zero factorial technically, that's just 1, times the value of e to the i at minus i, which is 2 pi i e. That's our first very simple example. In my second example, we're integrating sine 2 pi z. Well, again, that's not a problem. It's analytic everywhere, divided by uh, 3z minus 1. Well, 3z minus 1 is 0 when z is a third, which is what I've drawn in my little diagram here. And again, the contour mod z equals 3, assume taken once anti-clockwise. So all we have to do is evaluate the appropriate function there's a little uh, trick in here, it's why I've chosen to do this one. Cauchy's integral formula says it must be z minus something. And I've got a 3z minus 1 here. So I have to take that factor of 3 out. So it's not the function sine 2 pi z I'm evaluating, but a third sine 2 pi z. So I can make this thing into z minus a third. So you could rewrite it like that if you want. It's the integral along mod z equals 3 one third sine 2 pi z over z minus a third. And now it's in exactly the correct shape. We just have to evaluate sine 2 pi z when z is a third, multiplied by the appropriate multiples of pi, of course. So that's 2 pi i, again, 0 factorial, times a third, times sine of 2 pi upon 3. And uh, sine 2 pi upon 3 is, of course, um, root 3 upon 2. So we're going to get pi i over 3 times root 3. Cancelling off the 2s. 2 pi i over root 3 if you want. Right. So that's our second example. Again, quite simple, but you've got to be careful. The point of me doing this one is you must have the correct shape of the denominator. In my third example here, 
uh, z plus 2 over z minus 2 times z plus 4 all squared. Uh, this is my picture down here. I now have two singularities, two points where the denominator vanishes, 2, which is inside gamma, and minus 4, which is outside. And it's only 2 that matters. The fact that minus 4 is a singularity isn't relevant because the function I'm going to look at, I want to be analytic in on and inside gamma. So if we rewrite this appropriately as z plus 2 over z squared plus 4, all over z minus 2, then z plus 2 over z squared, sorry, z plus 4 squared, is analytic on an inside gamma. It's not analytic outside, but that doesn't bother us. So all we have to do is evaluate this function at 2 multiplied by 2 pi i. So it's 2 pi i times, well, let me write it out, z plus 2 over z plus 4 squared evaluated at z equals 2, which is 2 pi i times, well, we're going to get 4 over uh, 2 plus 4, 6 squared. That's, uh, what's that, 4 over 36, which is uh, 1 over 9, so it's uh, 2 pi i on 9. And that's my answer. Right. Now, in each of these three examples, I've just been using the standard Cauchy integral formula, where n here is 0. That's sometimes just what we refer to as the Cauchy integral formula, and this thing is known as the Cauchy integral formula for derivatives. What I now want to do is another example where we do actually have to do some differentiation. Okay, in this uh, last example, I'm going to do uh, one where we do actually have to do some differentiation, because if you can see, I've got a z plus i squared here on the denominator, so this is not n equals 0 like the previous uh, cases. But otherwise, it's a very similar integral. In fact, if you look, this is the same, exactly the same picture, really, that I had for the first example, with a singular, sing, sing, single singularity at minus i, and the contour going once around it. I should perhaps have pointed out there that you don't have to draw these things very accurately or to scale. The whole issue is to get where the contour goes and where the singularities are, whether inside or outside. That's what's important. But to actually uh, do this problem then, we're going to say that is, well, of course, the integral formula says that's 2 pi i over, well, it'll be 1 factorial. e to the i z, once again, is analytic everywhere, so we don't have that issue, and we're assuming we're going around once anticlockwise. So we've got to differentiate e to the i z uh, once, and I'll use this notation to do that, evaluated at z equals minus i. Well, 1 factorial is 1, so that's not a problem. So we get 2 pi i. Well, the derivative of e to the i z is just i e to the i z. So it's i e to the i times minus i, which we met before. That's just uh, e. So I'm going to get minus 2 pi e. And that's my answer. So in each of these three examples, we've calculated integrals that well, technically we possibly could have done if we parameterized the contour. They were all circles after all. But in the end, you see just how much easier it is to use the Cauchy integral formula. I've done four integrals without doing any integration whatsoever.